we have a URL to the action class mapping. So this is happening fine now. Now the question is, what happens when the action class method is executed? Now this execute method completes. Now we have implemented a sysout in our execute method, but that's not really the ideal way in which a web application communicates to an end user. The end user, the client, would like to see a HTML. And the way to see a HTML is by rendering a JSP. And of course, using servlets as well, but now we're not going to be using servlets. We are using JSPs for the view. So a client would like to see a rendered JSP as an end result of the request. Now the client has made a request, and right now we are printing to the logs. So now the client is wondering, hey, what's going on? So we have to send a JSP, a rendered JSP back to the client. So that's going to be the next step. Now, how does an execute method transfer the flow of execution to the JSP? Now, an execute method could do a lot of things. Now, here I have a tutorial action that uh, the intended goal of a tutorial action is to pull up a list of tutorials available on the internet. Now, let's say you have a business service method that gives the list or execute method itself does all the hard work and it ends up with a list of tutorials. Now, it has to pass the control to a JSP that actually renders those tutorials in an HTML format. Now, this could be an array list or some kind of a list in the method. You need a JSP to render that in HTML format and passed to the client. Now, an execute method could pass the control to the JSP. Now, let's say you have a JSP which says, uh, you know, view tutorials or show tutorials.jsp. Now, an execute method should say, hey, stretch framework, I have the list of tutorials, now pass the control to that. Uh, show tutorials.jsp. But that's not really ideal because now let's say you change the name of the JSP to display tutorials or somebody else did it. Now we have to go to this method and change the name over here and of course rebuild and redeploy the entire application which is a pain. So ideally this should actually be a configuration item. Well that's not a problem. We can have an additional column over here which says JSP and then the stretch XML does all the mapping. So from a URL, go to an action class, execute this method in the action class, and go to the JSP. So URL, action, JSP, URL, action, JSP, URL, action, JSP. So this mapping could be there, but there is one problem. An execute method could end up displaying different results depending on different conditions. And you might want to display different JSPs, you might want to render different JSPs depending on how things go inside this execute method. Uh, one example that I can give you is, now let's say I have this uh, get tutorial request that's being made. Now the tutorial actions execute method executes and now if it gets the list of tutorials and everything is fine, it has to redirect to the show tutorials.jsp. You could configure that over here. But the problem is if there's an error, there's some problem, it's not able to get the list of tutorials, then you might want to redirect to another JSP called as an error message dot JSP, which displays an error message. So that should also be, uh, you know, that's also a potential JSP that could be displayed because of this tutorial action. And uh, let's say this is a secured site. The user has to log in to see the site. Now let's say there is no session available and this call is being made. You might want to redirect to a login.jsp. So there are three different JSPs that you would want this tutorial action to possibly redirect to. Of course, in one request, it's going to be just one JSP, but there are three different conditions. And there is a possibility that this execute method could redirect to three different JSPs in this scenario. So how do you deal with that? So the problem here is a JSP displayed depends on the result of the method execution. And then the same class may need to show different JSPs depending on different conditions. So what do we do when there is a situation like this? Well, the solution that the Struts framework has proposed for this, and which is a part of the configuration, is that well, you cannot really mention the JSP name in the execute, and you cannot really mention the JSP name in the XML because you would need the end result of the execute. So what the Struts framework proposes is, first of all, have the JSPs in the Struts XML. Say there are three different JSPs that execute, put 
could possibly redirect to, then configure all the three JSPs over here. And secondly, the execute method knows what JSP to call depending on how things go in the you know in the method. So depending on that, let the execute method return some kind of a code which indicates which JSP to call. So it's going to be something like this. The execute method returns, let's say, a success or a failure, and there is a specific JSP mapped to each condition that the execute method returns. In case of a success, there is a JSP. In case of a failure, there's a JSP. So it's very simple. An execute method executes, returns a code, and a code is mapped to a JSP, and that JSP executes. So this is the solution for the problem. So we do not have to mention the JSPs over here. The execute method does not have to worry about the JSPs. It just returns a particular code, and then based on that code, the right JSP, which is configured in the XML again, is used for rendering the results. So it could be something like this. You have a URL mapped to an action as usual, but then each action will have a particular code upon which a particular JSP has to get executed. So you could have n number of this for a particular action class. So depending on the result of the action class, if it returns a success, then you show success.jsp. If it returns a failure, you show an error.jsp. And if it returns, say, a no session code, depending on its check for a logged in session, if it returns a no session, redirect to a login.jsp. So this is an additional configuration that goes to the struts XML. Okay, back to Eclipse now. The first part of the configuration has already been achieved a URL to an action mapping. Now, this mapping could have multiple code to JSP mappings. So that is actually a child of this action mapping. So you have something called as result. So in this result tag, I can specify the name of the JSP. So let me create a JSP because we don't have anything here. So I'll say new, other, I wanna create a JSP. I'll call this success.jsp. And I will just print success page. Very simple. So now I can show success.jsp as a result of tutorial action. So let me just do that. I will say success.jsp. Okay. Note that I've used a slash here because it's actually in the web directory. So the success.jsp is directly inside web. So the path is slash success.jsp. If you have another directory inside which you put the JSP, you can specify the path over here. Okay, so now this is the JSP. What about the code? Now I can specify the code over here using the name property. So let's say I have a code called success. So if the action class execute method returns me a code of success display success.jsp so this is the mapping of code to jsp now again i can have multiple such mappings i can have a failure code in which i display error.jsp now let's create an error.jsp as well so that we have that to use So I have an error page. Okay. So this is the error.jsp as well. So I have two mappings. So a tutorial action could display either a success or an error depending on the code that it returns. Now the question is how does the tutorial action return a code in the first place so that the right JSP is is uh, rendered. Well, it actually does that by the string over here. You remember we had a string return type for the execute. We had just returned a blank over here, but actually what this return type means is this return type is the code that the action class sends back for the right JSP to be rendered. So this could either return a success or it could return a failure. So depending on the code that this 
action class method x zero returns, we can display the right JSP. I mean, we don't have to actually, since we have configured it, Stretch automatically takes care of rendering the right JSP. So just to test it out, what I'm going to do is I'm going to return the same code as we've configured over here for success.jsp. Now let's see if the success JSP is going to get rendered. Now, unfortunately, even with all these configurations, we have the stretch XML, we have the action class, we have the JSPs. In spite of having all this, we are still not ready to execute the project. There's one final thing that we have to do. You might be wondering what that is. Well, the thing is, if I run this project now, okay, and I call a uh, get tutorial, what's going to happen is this, this is going to run inside Tomcat, right? Tomcat is a sublet container. So what it's going to do is whenever it gets any input request to the struts to starter application, the first thing that it's going to do is it's going to look up a servlet. So if it's if it sees an input URL like get tutorial, it's going to look up web.xml and see if there is any servlet map to that. There is no servlet map to that. So Tomcat says, hey, what's going on? I'm going to display an error. That is the problem. We need to tell Tomcat not to worry about doing the mapping and we need to tell, we need to tell it to just leave the mapping to struts. We need to tell it, hey, we have all the configuration done in struts, we want struts to take care of the mapping and the rendering and all that stuff. So do not try to look for servlets over here. Uh, we have all that covered. So the way we do that in struts too is to have a filter. Now, the purpose of using a filter is, I'm going to put this filter tag, which I've copied outside. So what I'm doing here is I'm using a filter called struts2 and I'm giving a filter class. The purpose of using this filter is for struts2 to, to kick in even before Tomcat's, Tomcat looks at the servlets. So filter obviously executes before all the servlets execute. So even if you have any servlet over here, it's going to be looked at only after this filter does its job. So that's the reason why we have a filter over here. And this filter is actually a struts class. We have a class called struts prepare and execute filter. This is the default filter that you need to use and this filter is going to do the rest. So as long as you have declared the filter over here and of course you have to do the filter mapping as well which I'm going to do now. I'm going to say all the URLs by using the slash star for the URL pattern every URL will have to go through the struts2 filter. So these two, you know, the filter as well as the filter mapping configuration is going to make sure that every request that comes to struts2 starter is going to go through struts2. So Tomcat does not have to worry about looking up servlets. It has to pass the control to the struts2 and then struts2 is going to kick in and it's going to look up at the struts XML and then it's going to take uh, control from then on. It's going to look at the URL. It's going to see what's the action that's mapped to it. It sees, okay, it's tutorial action, and it executes the execute method, waits for a return type, okay, it returns success, and it's gonna look up success.jsp because that's the JSP for the code success, and it's gonna render the JSP. So this is finally done, and we have a complete flow, and we are ready to execute. Oh, I think I've made a mistake over here. The filter should be inside the web app. Okay, now this should work fine. Okay, now we are all set to run this project. So I'm going to right click and say run on server. I'm going to choose Tomcat, always use this guy. And finish. Now it's going to deploy this application on Tomcat and it's going to start the Tomcat server. And right away we see an error. How awesome is that? So this error says that there is no action mapped for namespace slash. We're going to look at what this error is in a little while, but our goal is to execute the action that we have mapped, get tutorial. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to enter that URL. Remember we spoke about the application context root and then the URL after that. So that's what we've done. 
this is going to be the URL after the application name. So I'm going to call that get tutorial. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a dot action. So this is the default extension, if you can call it an extension for a URL that you configure over here. Whenever you configure an action name, it actually means that name dot action. So the URL should have a dot action in the end. Again, this is configurable in a lot of ways. We're going to look at that in the subsequent tutorials. But for now, the way to execute a particular action to call a particular action in the URL is to use the action name appended with dot action. So I'm going to use that and hit enter. And there you go. We have a success page and we also have hello from execute, which means that our execute method has run displayed it's printed this message and it has returned success and that success has picked up our success.jsp and our success.jsp has printed out success page now let's change this to error now let's say i want to change my class to return failure and i'll save this now hopefully tomcat is going to pick that up and do a hot deploy And there you go, it's done that. Now let's execute the same action, the same URL. And there you go, it's returning me error.jsp because the action class is returning failure code and the failure code is mapped to error.jsp. So this is a complete flow from a URL to an action class and from an action class, depending on the code, to the right JSP. So this is the configuration and struts. And the other configuration that we did was in web.xml, we added a filter and a filter mapping. So we added a filter called struts2, and the filter class was struts prepare and execute filter. And that filter was mapped to all URLs. So we had a slash star, which means for any URL that is requested by this uh, to this application, you want the struts to filter to take over and then this configuration is going to uh, pick it up from there and call the right action classes in the JSPs. So this is our first um, struts to web application. Writing this application, we've covered a lot of concepts. We've covered action classes, we've covered struts XML, and we've covered the action class resp the result uh, mapped to a JSPs, and we've also looked at the web.xml configuration for using the struts filter. I hope the concepts are clear now, at least at an initial level. We'll look at a lot of these concepts in much more detail in the subsequent tutorials. Thanks for watching.